invite you to stand for our prayer of invocation and then the reading of our gospel. Pray with me. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the way of eternal life through so Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning, and I hope it's on the screen today, is from Mark 7, good, verses 24 through 30. Listen as God speaks to us from his word. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence a secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an evil spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Cyrus. Cyrene, Phoenicia, she begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Mm. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found that her child found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. You may be seated. You know what time means to a preacher? No one does, but I was told, Jerry, be on time today. And we've had a full worship experience, so no complaints today because it's a short sermon. Amen? It doesn't even have to be a good one if it's short, right? So I need you all to participate with me a little bit. Jump, Jerry, jump. Jump, Jerry, jump. Jump, Jerry. Man, the, the sound got quiet in a hurry. And it did that night, and I wondered, how did I end up in a 150-foot tower with a bungee cord wrapped around my leg and people chanting, jump, Jerry, jump. It's, it's like they wanted to get rid of me or something. But I know how it happened. It was $40 and I said, I don't have $40. I'd been teaching all of two months, hadn't even got a paycheck yet. My wife was you know, newly married to me and making me hot dogs because we didn't have any money. She said, there's no way you're spending $40 to impress a bunch of teachers at a staff faculty party that turned bad. Y'all know teachers can be bad sometimes. <laughs> and it was a bunch of coaches, so you know how bad that really gets, right? And uh, so what happened is they were daring everybody in October to do like a flip off of the diving board into this cold swimming pool, and I wouldn't do that. And I said, hey, I saw over at that car dealership, they got a bungee tower. And they said, yeah. But I said, I don't have any money. And they said, dare you to do it. And I said, no. And they said, we'll pay for it. And I said, no. And one guy said, double dog dare you? <laughs> well, that, you have to do it then, right? You, you can't out double dog dare stupid. You just have to go <laughs> along with it. So that's how I ended up there. One guy in front of me on this swinging crane, he jumps out and he weighed about 300 pounds and he got real close, all right? <laughs> and that whole thing was swinging. That's 15 stories above and I'm going, ooh. And there's another guy with me in there. He started crying and wouldn't go, which meant I didn't even know him, a complete stranger, but you know what I had to do? You sissy, I'm going, all right? <laughs> so uh, they stick me up there and they're all chanting. And I just thought, Lord, you get me through this, I won't be stupid until tomorrow. And, uh, and so I did it, and it worked out. This guy wanted to marry Jenny that was a math teacher and single if I died, so it was all covered. And, uh, but uh, those double dog dares, right? When I look at this scripture today, especially the beginning of it, I have to say, doggone, Jesus, you had to go and do that, right? He, he, he had to get out of Galilee, he went up north, he went to... 
an area that's also known as Tyre and, and Sidon. It's, it's to the north. It's part of Israel, the northern kingdom, but it's on the Mediterranean Sea. And with that comes tension because if you're by any sea, you get people from other places that come to and from. It's like down here on the Red River. I got a uh, true Collinsborn down there sitting on top of a hill looking at tags. If they have Texas on the front of them, he radios up here to me says, I think they're going to Atwoods. I call Atwoods and I say, you make sure you get them out of here in a hurry, okay? Send them back home. We don't need those kind, right? Same, same idea around it. There were people who were coming from uh, the Syrophoenician world that were, they even spoke a different language. Y'all ever hear people talk about that? Why don't they speak Hebrew around here? You know, that kind of thing. And, and they spoke Greek. And so there was all this tension around. Jesus goes up there, and Jesus was like on Labor Day weekend. All he wanted to do was get away and rest. He goes into a house desiring not to be known. He didn't want anyone to know that he was present. But when Jesus is in the house, every other community of faith knows it, and they say amen. When Jesus is in the house, amen. thank you for helping. All right. You know how you get out of here quicker. You have to participate, all right? And uh, so it doesn't take long, and his secret is out. And it identifies this woman a few ways. First, it starts off by saying that she had a daughter. Does it say how old the daughter is? You know I know, though? 13. Because when you're 13, you can roll your eyes in the back of your head as a girl and keep on walking. And you can make it spin around and say things sometimes, right? What does it say was wrong with her daughter? Possessed, demon possessed, 13 year old girl, guaranteed, right? We don't know. And if you've ever had anyone, and some people say, well, I don't believe in demonic possession. Someday I'll take you on a hospital call so you can see a 50 year old going through uh, heroin withdrawals or a 30 year old beautiful woman who's been mixing prescription meds with alcohol and has dug her fingernails into her arms to the point they have to put her in a straight jacket. Oh yeah, I've seen demonic before and it exists in all places. So whatever was happening, I don't know. But there's demons out there and they can take possession of people and when it happens, if you happen to be the mother of one of these children, you are highly motivated. Some of the demonic stories about children, one of them was a child who would thrash and throb and have convulsions and throw himself into a fire that a father was praying for. Another man had grown so old that they chained him and put him in a cemetery out amongst the tombs in Gerasene and he would run around naked in chains. It's a real situation that must be dealt with. So when you need help, we've always been taught, you go to Jesus, you go to the Savior. But this lady doesn't fit that bill. She's got some things wrong with her. She doesn't speak Hebrew. What does she speak? Greek. She speaks Greek. And she's not from Israel. She's from a place called Syrophoenicia. So that's, that's a problem, right? as far as people would be concerned. She goes into the house where Jesus is present, throws herself at his feet, and begs for her daughter to be cleansed of the evil spirits within her. Now, y'all know how Jesus is, right? Jesus is all happy-go-lucky, nice guy, you know. Hey, uh, you need a new pickup? Here you go. That's how Jesus works in our watch, right? Oh, Jesus, I need this. I need that. You know, we kind of make him like Jesus Claus or something, right? Got a wish list? She wants her kid to be healed, cleansed. She throws herself at his feet, and he says, it's not right to take bread from the children's table and toss it to the dogs. Y'all are supposed to go, ooh, ooh. It, dog was a derogatory Term. I believe that she was probably not with husband that day. Because if any of y'all ever say that to my wife, you're going to be saying, run from Jerry, run. Okay? Because that'll make me fight and mad. It's that kind of language that was insinuated in that comment. And we're like, well, what's happening here? That's, 
That's not how Jesus responds. Well, one, did Jesus want to be bothered that day had he been working a lot? There's always a point with the words of Christ. Sometimes it's difficult for us to even get our minds wrapped around it. The disciples are all there. She's at the table. And I don't know, if, have y'all ever had little dogs in your life? They're great when you're raising up kids. Like you stick them in the high chair on the splat mat. You give them a plate of macaroni and cheese. You look over there and your boys are going, throwing it to the dog. And the dog's jumping up and getting That's big fun, isn't it? Until mom comes home. All right. So having a dog underneath the table is not uncommon for a lot of people, but when you call a person by that language, it becomes a little bit more tense. The conversation is elevated up to here. Now, I want to talk to you about a dogged faith, though. I'm talking about a faith that you stay on track, you know the mission, and you don't get detracted from it. She's on a mission. What does she want more than anything in life? Healing for her daughter. That's all she wants. Her daughter's back, up, back home in a bed, demonic possessed. She's there to get action. That tells me that she understands something about this one called Jesus. She doesn't know him as a great prophet probably or anything else she probably doesn't even know he's from nazareth she's not from there but she's heard that he can heal the lame he can make the blind to see the deaf to hear that he's willing to cross boundaries if you were here last week we talked about the rituals around hand washing and how it's not what goes into a man that makes him defiled it's what comes out jesus was crossing boundaries like he's called us to cross boundaries to go places and to be with people that we might not be quite so comfortable being around. To address that there is an order, there is a sequence. And for Jesus, it was for the lost sheep of the house of Israel initially. But as Paul would say, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. I'm a Gentile. Any Gentiles among us? I'm a Gentile. I wasn't first in line. But God so loved the world that he gave his son. Amen. And, and there was something to be learned. He wanted the disciples to understand dogged faith. I'm talking about that kind of faith. Y'all know this, Luke chapter 11, verse 9. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and what? Knock and what? And you know how many people know the context of that parable? They know that, but here's what happened. In that parable before Luke 11, verse 9, a man at midnight all of a sudden has a bunch of dinner guests show up. Probably in-laws at the midnight, right? Yeah, that's how they are. Okay? It's holiday weekend. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Why didn't you tell us you were coming? Well, I thought you'd be glad to see me. Not really, but you're here, right? So, uh, so they show up at midnight. And they want some food because that's how people are. Goes into pantry, not enough food, says... Well, I'll go over to my neighbor's house, which is great on a holiday weekend because I've been eating all of my neighbor's stuff while they're out of town. All right, so goes over there, knocks on the door. Hey, I need some bread. I got a bunch of unintended visitors. Leave me alone. We're already in bed. The late show's over with. Hey, mama and the kids are in bed. Leave me alone. On the third time, you know what Jesus said about that guy? He'll get up and give you bread. Because you're a friend? No way. Not because you're a friend at all. But because you were bold in your asking. Dogs are pretty bold in their asking, aren't they? Y'all ever see any of those little dogs that sit at the table? Ooh, ooh, ooh. We had one that if you didn't watch it, he'd jump up on the table. That made me mad, all right? But dogs are persistent. Dogs also have this negative side of them as well. Uh, Proverbs, I love Solomon and the way he uses this. This is great right before lunch. Like a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool to his folly. Remember that next time you see a dog out there doing it. You don't want to be called a fool, right? David and Goliath, 1 Samuel 17, 43. You come at with me at sticks. Do you think that I am a dog? I will rip you from limb to limb and give your flesh to the birds of the air. You know what Dave, David did right then? While he was talking, I come at you in the name of the Lord, of the God, the host of his armies, 
and threw a rock and hit him right between the eyes and who ended up being fed to the birds, right? Being a dog is not positive, but having dogmatic faith to where you will continue to knock, continue to petition is responded well. It's also a good lesson in listening. Jesus said it's not right to give the children's bread before, to the dogs before they have finished. She heard that, and she responded, yes, Lord. She didn't get upset. She didn't get angry. She acknowledges his position of authority in her situation because she's focused on the mission. And she uses the words of Christ to give this reply. But yes, Lord, even the dogs under the table get the crumbs of the children's meal. The crumbs. Are y'all going to get the whole body of Christ today? Anyone getting the whole loaf? You ever think about that? We say, here you go. Here's each one of you a loaf because you're that important. You get all of Jesus and he's yours. Take him as you want him. Now, hang on. We'll get another loaf. Here you go. You get all of Jesus. You take him. He's yours. What do we do with that loaf? It gets broken, doesn't it? Many of the members, but one body, right? We basically give and receive the one great gift throughout all of us. But his grace is sufficient, right? Even the crumbs, I'll take them, is what she's saying. And because of that answer, Jesus says, you can go, your daughter's well. Now that girl wasn't at that place, right? She was far off. This is why I tell people, someone does not have to have faith to be healed. Did you know that? Can someone of faith petition God and that person be healed without them knowing it? Yes, they can. She was healed at a distance because of the persistent faith of a mother who was not supposed to really know and understand who this Jesus was, and therefore it became an example to all of us what it means to have scrappy faith, to be that kind of person who would pray for another. You may be thinking, man, life is crumbling apart. Things aren't going the way I want them to. You watch the news, we got... All these people coming from different places. What are we going to do? We're going to give them Jesus. That's what we're going to do. What are we going to do when everything's going all right? We're re walking around saying, zippity doo da, zippity a. Wonderful feelings coming my way. Choir's supposed to sing that right then. Okay, all right, y'all missed that. But <laughs> when things are going our way, you know what we're going to do? Give them Jesus. That's all we are called to do. The Syrophoenician woman is a perfect example of listen to the words of God, acknowledge who he is, respond in kind, and we will receive. Ask shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Do you have that kind of scrappy faith like she presented that day? Let us pray that we might all be well. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Even though it is even hard to hear upon our ear that she did not lose her mindset, that not even knowing fully and wholly who this Jesus is, which is a reminder to us why we say that infants represent the outward sign of the inward faith of grace. Because... We could never know you fully and wholly until we are with you face to face. But we can be those who yearn for you, who stay focused on the mission, who will do whatever it takes for others to experience Christ and his healing. Thank you, Lord, that that young lady was cleansed from those evil spirits that day. That when her mother went home and found her in bed, that we assumed that all was well and that they had a great and terrific experience together. I pray for that kind of healing of all of our minds. That we would never give up. That we would never say, I didn't get what I wanted out of Jesus. 
But instead we'd say, I got exactly what I needed. A Savior, redemption, holiness, and the Holy Spirit within us. Lord, we give you praise and glory for this day. We praise your holy name as we prepare to receive these, the gifts of God, which you have given to us, your followers.